This is always such a great place to come. Go Cala National Forest. Greetings and welcome to my video. I'm Peter Updike and tonight we're going to talk about deer hunting. How to get started. So many of us have a path that we took that got us where we are today. Whether it be through a family member or somebody took us under our wing and showed us how to get started. And with fewer and fewer and fewer people hunting these days, the opportunity to learn, well, is slowly being diminished. And I wanted to to make a video to help those that don't have an avenue to learn how to go deer hunting, well, give them an aid to, to help and them to maybe, if they're interested in going deer hunting, deer hunting is kind of a calling, becoming a hunter is kind of a calling and uh, if you feel called, if you like being in the woods, if you like camping and hiking and you always thought, well maybe I'd like to go deer hunting, how do I do it? Well that's what this video is about. So. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna get started with that here in just a minute. But first, I've got something I want to show you. Check this out. This is a this is a painting that I got from my mom and dad. My dad passed away a few years back, and my mom is getting up there in years, and she she lives here and with my sister. She goes back and forth. Anyway, my uh, great grandmother painted this painting. It's a little nautical scene of some old houses there at the water's edge. It's a watercolor. Carrie Johnson, uh, Vivian's, that would be Vivian Johnson, Vivian Updike, uh, her mother. So uh, that would be my great grandmother. I'm real happy to have this and I'm gonna find a place here in the studio to put it because again, it's a family heirloom and it's, it's pretty cool. I like it. So uh, that's that. All right, so let's get started now. If uh, you want to go deer hunting you don't know how to get started here's what here's a list of things that you need to address in order to get started okay so here we go know what it means to be legal all right so whatever state you live in you're going to want to go online and you're going to want to find the DNR or the the state wildlife agency whatever website that they have that provides all of the hunting and fishing rules and regulations, licenses and permits, all of that information. You're going to want to search that out on your computer and you want to digest all of the information that pertains to hunting on public land. Okay, we're going to talk about hunting on public land. So, yeah, you'll need to go online and begin to digest all of that information. What's it mean to be legal? What is it you're going to need in order to go hunting? so that you'll have all your bases covered. There's a lot of information and from state to state it changes and it varies. So you're going to need to do your homework instead of watching TV. It can take it can take a month for you to figure out all of the information that's there. We'll address some of it. We'll, we'll address the basic information here today. But for whatever state you're in, you'll want to find that website, get a link, and get in there and start looking and, and discovering what it is it's going to take for you to go hunting. Well, the first thing you're going to need, obviously, is a hunting license. Most states, if you um, want to go hunting and you want to get a hunting license, you're going to need to take a hunter safety course. All right, They offer those courses online and you can complete the course, the tutorial course, and uh, get your hunting license. In addition to a hunting license, you're, you're going to need to hunt on public land. You're going to need a management area stamp. Okay, in addition to your license. You may also need, okay, are you ready? Here's a list of the things you'll need. If to hunt with a muzzleloader, you'll need a muzzleloader permit. To hunt with an archery equipment, you'll need archery permit. You'll need a whitetail permit if you're going to be hunting whitetail deer. If you're hunting big game in some states, they consider it a big game license. That would cover turkeys, that would cover deer. 
any big game species that live in that state. And the list goes on and on and on. You may need, you may need permits, uh, a habitat permit, okay? What I get is I get a umbrella license. I get a license that covers all of those things. Cost me $101 every year to hunt in the state of Florida, okay? And it covers everything. It covers my archery. It covers my muzzleloader. It covers my whitetail permit. It covers my hunting license, my fresh and saltwater fishing. So that's what I buy. I'll counsel you to see if your state offers that same same sort of thing. Again, there's no greater knowledge. There's a lot you're going to have to learn, and it's important that you don't get overwhelmed with the information, okay? If you're going to be legal, you'll need to learn things like you need, if you're going to hunt during the muzzleloader or modern gun season, you're going to need to wear 500 inches of blaze orange. That'll be a rule that you'll have to know and understand. You'll have to know and understand antler restrictions, okay? Um, what's legal? And, uh, what can you shoot? What can't you shoot? Okay? Do you need a quota permit for certain areas? All of these things will be in that be on that website. They're 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 it's it's very it's very vast, but uh, I promise you you can get to the end of it and you can figure it out. If I can do it, you can do it. Alright? Alright, the second question you're gonna need to ask yourself is where can I hunt? Uh, my favorite places to hunt are national forests. Not to be confused with a national park can't hunt in a national park, but you can hunt in a national forest. This buck here was killed in a national forest. Uh, he's my best public land buck, and I killed him in the Ocala National Forest one week before the season's end. Uh, I needed no quota permit to hunt there. Uh, it's my favorite place to hunt. Thousands and thousands and thousands of acres to hunt, and uh, yeah, it's a great place to go. Now, um, this buck here came off state land. All right, you'll have state property to hunt on and you'll have uh, federal property to hunt on, okay? Uh, again, you'll need to check where are these lands closest to your home, okay? My advice is for you to find an area that you can hunt that's as close to your home as possible to limit drive time, okay? If you wanna hunt, you're going to need to invest yourself in in the art of hunting, coming and going and uh, and be in it for the long haul. It, these two deer represent years and years and years of hunting, okay? So choose where you're going to hunt, find that state property, find that federal property, and, and begin scouting. Begin investing yourself in discovering places where you can hunt and find the places that you can't hunt. Know where you can't hunt. In the Ocala National Forest, there's probably three places that you can't hunt. And where I hunted this deer in the Withlacoochee State Forest, there were closed areas there as well. And you need to know where those places are, okay? So, uh, yeah, you're going to have to do your homework, figure it out. But you can do it. It's, it's, not, it's, it's hard if you don't know how, but once you get a handle on it all, well, then it's easier to, easy to figure out. All right, so next thing you can do is uh, method of take. Now, usually uh, we'll have an archery season early on in the season. When I say early on, September, okay? Uh, if you're so inclined to do an archery hunt, once you find that spot to hunt, archery is a great time of year to get in the woods. I, I shoot a Matthews helium bow, and that's this bow right here. I'm pretty committed to the idea of hunting with a bow and arrow, but uh, you don't need to go to this extent right, out, right off the bat. You can probably go to a pawn shop and find yourself a recurve bow, a couple of arrows, and uh, just look, just to experiment and see if it's something you want to do, okay? Bow hunting is, is a, uh, it's not complicated, but it is in depth and has, has a lot of facets to it that you'll have to figure out. So before you go out and spend a bunch of money, maybe you just want to entertain the idea, shoot a few arrows, maybe borrow a bow if you know someone that's got one, and uh, just see if that's uh, something you want to do, okay? But I always bow hunt. I bow hunt the first 30 days of the season, which is usually in September, into October, because it's a great time for me to get in there, get in the woods and do some scouting, okay? All right, the next thing you'll want to think about is a uh, muzzleloader. We have a muzzleloader season here in Florida now. It's pretty short. Uh, for the past three years, I've only gotten three uh, three-day hunts, and... Uh, I hunt with a muzzleloader every year, and uh, I enjoy doing it, but it is short. But again, it 
gives you an early season hunt, okay? And uh, you may want to think about doing a muzzleloader hunt if you're so inclined, okay? And then um, modern gun hunting. Uh, these are my deer rifles. This is a uh, Remington Model 7, chambered in 7mm row 8. It has a scope on it. Now we talk about antler restrictions. I have a scope on my muzzleloader. You'll need to check your res regulations because some states don't allow a scope on a muzzleloader, okay? But in the state of Florida, you're allowed to have it. So, uh, you know, when you're talking about three points or better on one side or a 10-inch main beam, you may see a deer at 50 yards. You see a deer at 50 yards, and it's standing in the cover, and you can see it's a deer. You can see it's a buck, but you don't know if it's legal or not. You'll be glad you have that scope to be able to zoom in and see. Oh, yes, he does have three scorable points on one side that makes the deer legal. It gives you the green light to shoot it, okay? Again, this is a centerfire rifle. Uh, centerfire rifles are pretty much required. Now, some states don't allow rifle hunting. They only allow shotgun and uh, slug guns. So you may want, again, check the regulations on that as well. You can fit a shotgun with a scope and uh, shoot a slug gun, and they're very effective. Another uh, gun I like to hunt with is this, this little Marlin 3030. I've had this gun my entire adult life, and uh, I like this old gun. And uh, again, it's fitted with a scope. It has a short range of about 100 yards. But uh, I sure love hunting with this old rifle. And uh, yeah, I've killed my fair share of deer with this rifle. So, uh, yeah, the, that's what's called method of take. The archery, the muzzleloader, and the modern gun, okay? That's method of take. All right, so um, you've got your hunting license, you know where you're going to hunt, and you've bought yourself a bow or a rifle. Now we're gonna talk about, well, how, what, I don't know what to do when they get out in the woods. Well, that's gonna be called tactics at work. What tactic are you gonna use to hunt? All right, so this is what I do. Most people in the South and in the Midwest hunt from an elevated tree stand or a saddle. Saddle hunting has become popular among younger folks that hunt, and uh, I'll never do the saddle hunting. It's too late in my life to be changing up. I like my, uh, my tree stand, my climbing tree stand, and I like to sit in it. I like the bar. I always wear your safety harness. I wear my safety harness when I'm in my climbing stand, I go up 10, 15, 20 feet, whatever I need to, and that's where I sit, okay? That's a tactic for me that works, to buy a climbing stand, to know where I'm going to set up, to have multiple spots to set up, and to uh, just every day go out, set up my stand, every day take it down, take it back to the house with me, okay? Another tactic that guys use is uh, spot and stalk. I wouldn't recommend wandering aimlessly through the woods in areas where you, other hunters might be. You might walk up on another hunter sitting up in a tree, and of course that's that's disrespecting his space if you do that, and you don't want to do that. Okay. Um, you can sit on the ground that overlooking a grassy a grassy knoll, or maybe overlooking a sawgrass pond or a big chop. They're very popular to overlook chops. You can even get a, a lawn chair and just sit in a lawn chair with a pair of binoculars and look out over large areas. I like doing that. It's a lot of it's 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 a lot of fun just to be able to sit, relax, and just watch an area. I love watching all types of wildlife. I I see a lot of black bears. I see coyotes and foxes and bobcats and birds of all kinds. And it's it's a it's a great thing to be able to sit and enjoy and be quiet and be still in, in the, uh, the woods, okay? All right, so with that said, what if you kill one? Um, you're going to need to prepare yourself in the event that you might kill a deer. Suddenly you find yourself needing to drag that deer all the way back to the truck. Well, I usually have a deer buggy with me. If I'm hunting down a trail that leads to a stretch of woods, I'll carry that deer buggy with me down that trail and when I enter into the woods, well then I'll leave the deer buggy there limiting the the distance I need to carry my deer. You need to consider that. You don't want to walk three miles away from the truck and then shoot a deer and then be left with the dilemma of getting it back to your truck, okay? So gutting your deer is something you'll have to prepare yourself for. I always gut my deer right where it lays, okay? If I shoot a deer and, it, and, and I see it go down and I get down and I go and I see my deer, well, it's time to gut that deer because here in the south, your deer will spoil. 
you don't take necessary steps to preserve what you've done, and that is you've killed a deer. The, the clock is ticking and time is running out on your deer. So you'll need to <clears throat> get that deer skinned and butchered and in a freezer just hours after you kill it, okay? So generally what I'll do is I'll skin my deer, I'll load it up on my buggy, I'll get it back to the truck, I'll stop at the store on the way home, I'll buy a couple of bags of ice, and I'll shove those bags of ice inside the body cavity of that deer, and that'll help cool it down. So once you get it home, you're going to need to skin it. All of that's going to take time. You're going to need to know what you're going to do with your deer. You're not going to have enough room in the freezer in your kitchen to put your deer, so where are you going to put it? You killed a 150-pound deer. You've got all this meat that you've got to deal with. What are you going to do with it? If you've got ice chests with ice in them, you can put the meat in Ziploc bags and drop them on ice, and that's a great temporary, something you can do for a temporary solution, but you're going to need to find a freezer to put in all your deer. I've got a chest freezer in my garage, and I can I can put a half a dozen deer in there if I was so fortunate to kill so many. And, uh, yeah, you can fill your freezer up with deer, and, yeah, it's a good life, right? But if you kill a deer and you have no place to put the meat, well, then you put your hard work and that deer at risk, okay? So think about that before you go hunting. What if I kill a deer? What am I going to do with it, all right? And then uh, cooking and eating wild game, if you've never cooked wild game, if you've never eaten wild game, it's going to be a challenge for you. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a bloody scene when you're butchering a deer. Uh, usually what I do is I take the, the steps. Now, I eat all portions of the deer that can be eaten. Um, I have no problem with eating liver. I have no problem with eating heart. Uh, I have no problem with grinding up some of my meat and turning it into hamburger. Parts of the deer that don't look too appetizing, putting it on a grind pile and grinding it up into hamburger. Yeah, I, I do that. I utilize every portion of the deer that I can possibly salvage off that carcass, okay? But you re remember, you have to eat it. So usually what I'll do is I'll take a portion of a roast or maybe part of the back strap. Now you can um, go online and there's all kind of videos that show you how to butcher a deer. But the more appetizing the meat begins to look, the more on track you are as far as butchering your deer, okay? Getting it off the bone, getting it in a Ziploc bag, and getting it on ice. Yeah, as the process goes on, the meat gets more and more suitable to look at, okay? Because at first it can be a daunting task. A dead, a dead wild animal laying in the carport, well, how are you going to turn that into food? Well, you're going to have to learn how. You have to figure it out, okay? And then learn how to cook it. Uh -huh. it's, it's an art form, okay? So you'll have to figure that out. All right, so um, one other thing that I'd ask of you as a new hunter is to learn to respect the space of other hunters. If you hunt in a national forest like I do, or if you hunt um, on a state forest during a quota permit hunt, well, you're going to be you're, go you're going to be with other hunters. You're going to be in the company of other hunters. They're going to be parked on the side of the road. You're going to see them on the trails. You're going to see them set up in their trees. You're going to need to learn to respect other hunters' space. You're going to need to figure out how you're going to avoid other hunters. I've got a saying that I like to use, and that is to avoid other hunters at all costs. If you can figure out a way to go hunting and not run into anybody and execute a hunt, okay, then you've been successful, whether you kill a deer or not. If you're able to go out and sit five or six hours and not disturb anybody else's hunts and have nobody disturb your hunt and get to the woods and get home safely, well then you've executed a pretty good hunt. Sooner or later, you're going to be a success. Sooner or later, you're going to have an opportunity. I should say the success part depends on what you do when that moment comes. Okay, But if you're able to plan a hunt, execute a hunt, and then get home safe and and meet those simple requirements. Those simple requirements are get in your stand in plenty of time, sit through the day, however long you plan on hunting, going from spot to spot to spot doesn't uh, really produce anything. It's just a sign of desperation. Once you've decided on a spot and you've set your stand up, you need to sit there and hunt 
for the duration of your hunt, however long you decided to hunt there. Usually what I'll do is, if I plan on hunting all day, I'll do a morning sit and an afternoon sit. Uh, if I see a lot of deer in one spot, I might go back to that. But if I saw nothing, well, I might go to a different spot. But if I hunt four hours in the morning and three hours in the afternoon, well, that's a full day, okay? If you do that often enough, eventually you'll get an opportunity on a deer, okay? So respect other hunters, respect their space. If you see a guy sitting up in a tree stand, don't walk up to him and say, Hey, man, did you see anything? No, that's not cool. We don't do that, all right? And if you see a guy parked on the side of the road, don't pull in behind him thinking this must be a good spot because he's there, all right? Yeah, that don't work. All right, so um, I've got a video called uh, Public Land Hunting Do's and Don'ts. You may want to watch that video as well. All right, so you may also encounter a game warden. Um, real quickly, the, the tip that I'd give you as far as game wardens are concerned is uh, just remember that they're not your friend. That said, they're not your enemy either, okay? They got a job to do. Uh, you've heard people say it's just business. That's the way it is with game wardens. It's just business. They may act like your friend. They may be friendly to you as part of their job, but you need to know they're, they're, they got a job to do. All right? They're going to ask you for your license. You need to have it on you. All right? They may want to check your truck. You need to let them do that. All right? So, um, yeah, just be aware. And you do all your homework, okay? You got your blaze orange on. You know where you are. You know you know you're parked in a good spot. You know that you're everything's right. You've done your homework. You've checked the rules and regulations for wherever it is that you live. It'll be okay, right? You won't have to worry about anything. Uh, yeah, it'll be fine. All right. Be sincere. Be honest. And uh, yeah, you. It, it goes a long way. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. Goes a long way. All right. So uh, just to recap. All right. If you want to. Uh, Go hunting, here are the steps. Know what it means to be legal. Go online, get your license, get that hunter safety course, and uh, figure out the rules and regulations. All the rules and regulations will be there. You just gotta find them, all right? Dig them up. And where to hunt? A uh, national forest is my first choice. State forest, they're good too. I hunt, I hunt both, okay? Can't hunt on a, on a national park, okay? There are some places you can pay to hunt. You may want to consider doing that. Maybe do a hog hunt or something if you just maybe hire someone to take you out. If uh, you've never hunted before and you want to go on a hog hunt, there are a lot of places online that sell hog hunts. And you can just ask them, well, how much would you charge to take me out? Show me the ropes. That'd be great. That would be a great, uh, a great way to get started, okay? If you're nervous about being out there by yourself or whatever on private land, yeah, just tell the guy, I've never hunted before. I want to learn how. How much to go out and kill a hog? Yeah. Be great. Method of take. If you're going to hunt with a bow, don't expect much. Okay? You might get an opportunity, but it's hard. Okay? You're going to need to invest yourself into bow hunting. You're going to need to invest yourself in all of this. It's none of it, none of it's easy. You need to be in it for the long haul. Okay? You may not see a deer. You may not see a hog for several uh hunts before you finally actually see something you can shoot. All right. Remember tactics at work. Figure out whether you're going to use a tree stand or just overlook an area. And uh, yeah, I would avoid the, the roaming aimlessly. Okay. That, doesn't, that usually doesn't work. All right. A good tree stand in a good spot. That's what I like to do. Remember if you kill a deer, be prepared to gut it. Be prepared to skin it. Figure it out. Okay. I've got a, a video you killed a deer, now what? Watch that video. Learn to cook your wild game. I've got cooking videos on the channel as well. And then uh, respect your fellow hunters, the do's and don'ts of uh, public land hunting. You may want to give that video a try. And remember, game wardens, they're out there. They're gonna, don't, there's no need to fear them, but respect them. And uh, yeah, just, just, have, just have all your P's and Q's in a row and, and you'll do fine. All right, so I hope that uh, that helps newcomers figure out how to get started in the hunting. Uh, there are a lot of do's and don'ts. There are a lot of gadgets. There are a lot of a lot of things entailed into going hunting. But you just take it a, a step at a time, bit by bit. And uh, hey, if you stay after it, like I, if I can do it, you can do it. It's very rewarding. Hunting is a calling. It's a part of our spirit. It's a part of of what makes us who we are. So uh, yeah, don't be ashamed to, to 
give it a try. All right, we love you guys, and we'll talk to you soon. See you. Bye.